perhaps the series of books that I've enjoyed writing the most has been the series called The Swans Are Not Silent. This is number seven in that series, A Camaraderie of Confidence, The Fruit of Unfailing Faith in the Lives of Charles Spurgeon, George Mueller, and Hudson Taylor. And, and just a word about the series, um, St. Augustine in the what fourth century retired from being the Bishop of Hippo and he was an absolute giant. And when he handed off his bishopric to his next in line, that person said, uh, the swan is silent and the cricket chirps. Meaning the, the giant who sang with such a beautiful voice theologically is now moving aside and a little, little cricket is coming in to take his place like me. And the point of my title, The Swans Are Not Silent, is to say not quite. They may not have a physical audible voice anymore, but if we could capture the swans in church history as they lived and write it down, they wouldn't be silent anymore. And so my aim here is that Charles Spurgeon and George Mueller and Hudson Taylor not be silent because they are great songs that we need to hear and sing along with. Spurgeon was pastor in London and George Mueller was a pastor but best known for his founding orphanages by which he cared for tens of thousands of children in his day and Hudson Taylor founded the, the uh, China Inland Mission and was known for his radical faith, trusting God for the next bowl of rice that would be on the table when it wasn't there. And what makes this book distinct, I think, is that they all knew each other. I didn't even know this until I started doing the research and giving talks on these guys. Is that they all knew each other in London, and Spurgeon's church was the kind of anchor there, and he was the one who could, could navigate those relationships, and they stoked each other's faith, their unfailing faith. They, they both believed very, they all believed very deeply in trusting God for the practical needs of every day's challenge. And for Mueller, that meant I've got orphans to feed. I'm not telling anybody what my needs are. I'm trusting God that milk will show up for breakfast. Same thing with Hudson Taylor. He didn't want to tell anybody. He would just pray. Now, the, that approach towards missions and orphanage care is critiqued in this book as well. But the, the main thing you will get, I think, if you read this, is three amazing models of magnificent childlike trust in the promises of God to meet your daily needs. So I, I hope that even though they're historically interesting, the main thing is that they strengthen our faith in God's care for us.